वेलकम बैक टू माई वीडियो ऑन प्रोग्रामिंग विथ ऑब्जेक्ट इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट टाइप कन्वर्शन एंड कास्टिंग एरेस एंड कंसोल इनपुट एंड आउटपुट इन टूडेज वीडियो वील डिस्कस अबाउट कंसोल आउटपुट कंटिन्यूशन ऑफ यस्टरडेज कंसोल इनपुट एंड आउटपुट एंड फॉर्मैटिंग ऑफ आउटपुट एंड ऑटो बॉक्सिंग एंड अनबॉक्सिंग In the previous class, we have seen about how to write into the uh, sorry, how to read data from the console like through the keyboard. So we were using buffer reader and scanner class to read data from the keyboard. And now let's see how to write into the uh, how to write into the keyboard. So into the output, uh, uh, into the output stream, which may be a file or a uh, output device. so uh, we mainly use two classes the print stream and the print writer class which will allow you to write data into the output stream now they both have almost same methods uh, we almost every time we use the print print or the print ln methods print and the print ln methods are mainly used to print data or write uh, print data onto the console now uh, the pre, uh, print stream generally uses um, the raw bytes it generally you uh, make use of writes the raw byte of data whereas print writer will convert the byte into its corresponding encoding scheme so uh, that's the main difference between print, print stream and print writer print stream it writes the raw bytes whereas the print writer converts those bytes into encoding schemes and then do the function um so uh, we mainly we gen, uh, we may always go with the print writer uh, class we rarely use the print stream class but uh, the uh, print the system dot out method the system dot out make use of the print stream to write data onto the operators console uh, now let's look into a small example of using print stream we are uh, using print stream so here since we have we are using these write methods we have to uh, import the print stream class this print stream class and the print writer class is available in the io package of java it is present in the io package of java that is why we are uh, importing java.io.print stream or print writer then our class is write demo now here as we i have told you the print stream will use the write method to write the byte into the uh, output stream okay so here uh, the write method will always the value passed to the write method is basically an integer so even though it is an integer it will only write the last eight bits of uh, last bytes of the data so here we have an integer variable a and into a we are storing q so that means q will be uh, um, the q's um ascii value will be stored into a and when we write that value when we are writing that value the output will be displayed as q so this is the uh, usage of print stream now when we use print writer when we are using print writer uh we are make creating an object of print writer class again we have to import the print writer class from the io package and uh, we are creating an object of the uh, print uh, object of the print writer class now if we look into the general form of the print uh, print writer it is like we are writing it into some output stream and we have a flush uh, boolean value of flushing on this flushing on is used to state whether uh, the the output stream should be flushed um should be flushed or not i mean automatically whether it should be flushed or not so if the flushing on is set to true then it will automatically flush java will automatically flush the output stream if it is set to false then it will not do it automatically so that is uh, so here we are writing something into the output stream and we uh, this print writer should have uh, will be writing something into the output stream and we are setting the boolean the boolean value to true since this boolean value is set to true the value will automatically flush the data will be flushed uh, after printing will be cleared off so uh, after uh, uh, since we are using the um, 
print writer uh, print writer we are we have to use the print writer object uh, over println methods these both supports they these both classes supports the print uh, print methods the print and print ln methods so uh, we are calling the print ln methods over this object and we are passing a string to it we are passing a string to it so this string will be coming into the output now we are storing i value as minus 7 and that is being displayed so we get the minus 7 into output and also we are storing double and that double is also displayed so the basic difference between print stream and print writer is that print stream is mainly used for byte stream and uh, print writer is used for character stream. Next, let's look into formatting of output. Now, uh, as we have seen it, uh, we in the old languages like C, we have used so many formatters for printing the output. Now, same way, Java also supports uh, supports. Uh, it make use of the formatter class to uh, create a formatted output. So in Java, we use the formatter class to create a formatted output. So using this formatter class, the, the, there are various formats which allow us to display the numbers, strings and time, strings, time, date, etc. in any format which you like. So uh, it also provides layout justification then uh, formats for numbers numeric string date and time then local specific output also but they cannot be used for multi-threaded access so the formatter class is mainly used for formatting the output and this is the formatter class uh, form it is a final class. Since it is a final class, it cannot be inherited. And it also, ex it is extending the object class. This object class is the parent class of all classes under Java. And they implement the closable and flushable interfaces. Now, these are some of the, uh, some of the uh, format specifiers, which is, uh, available in Java. These are the few format specifiers which we have used in our program. So we have the exam um, program here. Since uh, we, ha uh, we are using a class formatter, we have to import it and this formatter class is available inside the util package of Java. It is available inside the util package of Java. Now, um, uh, if we want to use the methods of the formatter class, we have to create an object of it. So we are creating an object of the formatter class. Once this uh, for, uh, uh, object is created, we can call format method and we can pass the string which we want in our uh, format to be displayed. So it uses the per formatter specify percentile s for string percentile d for integers and percentile f for float. So how will the output come? Wherever we've specified percentile s, the first string which it encounters will be placed. So we get formatting with Java. We got this with Java is placed at the percentile s and then is easy. Then we are displaying two uh, two uh, numbers. So uh, the first one is an integer. So percentile D is meant for placing integer and the percentile F is meant for placing the uh, floating point. So we get the integer and the float value displayed. Now once we uh, make use of the format method after this, uh, this use we are closing it. What happens here if we don't close it is that the next, if we are using the same object, then these, these data will get appended to the previous thing. So all these things will come appended together. So we are closing the format object. Um, once we, uh, now to display the octal and uh, hexadecimal part, we are creating again a form, uh, format, uh, uh, formatter object and that format and then again, we are passing the string to be displayed. So we have the, uh, so percentile x is used to display the number in, uh, in uh, the format specifier for hexadecimal and percentile o is for the uh, octal system. So here we get 
196 will be converted into its corresponding hexadecimal and octal and it will be displayed. So 196 in uh, hexa is C4 and 196 in octal is 304. So the, uh, the this value will be converted into hexa and stored over here and placed over here and this will be converted into octal and placed at this point. So hence we get this line in the output. Again, after, uh, uh, after, I mean, like, we have to create this string and then we are printing that object. So, once we, when we print that object, only then we get these outputs. Similarly, again, we close that and create an, uh, one, one more object. Then here we are using the calendar class. We are trying to display the uh, standard date and time. Okay. So, here uh, we are, uh, you, from the calendar class, Using the from the uh, using the calendar class object and the get instance method of the calendar class, we are getting today's today's date. So here in uh, at this point, uh, this uh, calendar this object this thing will display the calendar class object in this form. Okay, so here we have in this form it will be displayed. So we get Monday. Today is Monday, so being Monday, you get Monday, then uh, the month is February. So when I executed that, the month was February, then uh, the date on, on February 1st, it, whatever day we have executed on that day, on that current, that day data will be displayed over here. So day of day, month, date, then at what time it is being displayed. So this is at 11 hour, 11, uh, 30 min 23 minutes and seconds and the time zone. So this is the time zone and the year. So uh, one percentile T C will display the standard, uh, standard date and time in this format. Now if we want to display it in as a, in a different way, we can, we can get it like this. Um, uh, this uh, we have using percentile T L. L indicates hour, then M indicates minute, B indicates um, uh, B indicates month, and D indicates the month uh, month day and year. So we are extracting today's date. I mean, we are extracting the date, and then we are displaying it. So once we display it, we get this format this output in this thing as the out, output once we uh, print that object into the console so uh, that is about using formatter class we there are more uh, uh, format specifiers available in the uh, uh, website you can go through it in, uh, uh, we have a uh, to uh, we have in the um, oracles website we can find more uh, format specifiers so you can use them according to your wish. I have just used some of them for our discussion. Next is type wrappers or um, auto boxing and unboxing. So what is the use of type wrappers? Uh, as we have seen almost all uh, programming Con, uh, concept uses classes and objects in Java. But uh, Java also supports primitive types like int, float, double, etc. So there may be cases wherein we have to use these float val these primitive types as classes, as objects, or we may have to convert the objects into some, into the primitive types. So uh, in such cases, we uh, when you want to convert the uh, primitive type into another form, into object form, then we use the type wrappers. There are uh, many type many type wrappers for numbers, characters. Uh, in uh, we have different type uh, type wrappers, but uh, the uh, but while using these type type wrappers, they uh, the programmer has to be very careful. So. Uh, uh, from uh, late from the later versions of Java, it, uh, 
moved from using type wrappers to uh, uh, auto boxing and unboxing. So this auto boxing and unboxing, we don't have to use any methods uh, methods for conversion of these primitive type into objects and objects back to this primitive types. They supported auto boxing and auto unboxing. So that uh, so to convert these primitive type of data back uh, back and forth to uh, object and back to primitive type, we make use of auto boxing. So. Um, So, auto boxing was um, uh, uh, implemented from JDK 5. So, uh, it is a process by which the primitive type is automatically encapsulated to its equivalent type wrapper whenever an object of that type is needed. So, we if we when whenever we want to make use of any primitive type as an object, then we uh, the that process of converting the primitive type into its type wrapper is called as auto boxing and this can be done in a simple way. Uh, in the previous case in uh, before JDK 5 uh, they were making use of wrapper methods like such as int value, double value. So these methods had to be called to convert from uh, one form to the other. And auto unboxing is the process by which the value of that boxed object, like if we have uh, uh, convert, we have an integer object. From that integer object, we have to uh, extract the value and uh, store it into some integer primitive type. Then we call that process as auto unboxing. So auto unboxing is the process by which the value of a boxed object is automatically extracted and unboxed from the type wrapper when its value is needed. So this doesn't have to call the int value or double value methods of the wrapper classes. Now uh, this um, use of addition, uh, use of auto boxing and unboxing led to removing the difficult job of manually boxing and unboxing values. So when if we were doing it manually, we had to make use of the methods available in the wrapper class. It also prevent errors. Uh, while performing this manual boxing and unboxing that had led to the uh, creation of a lot of errors. So, we, so to prevent all those, this uh, concept of auto boxing was introduced. Then um, it was also very important for generics. This generics is mainly used when we, um, uh, this uh, generics will always work on objects, on work only on objects and generics is mainly used when you want to implement the same type of, same uh, same structure over different types. Like uh, for example, uh, we have a method say uh, method say A. This method has to work on integer and float. So what happens, what we does, we have to uh, write uh, separate methods using integer and we may have to write separate method of the same logic on float. But with the uh, use of generics, that repetition of methods was uh, was lost, when, like uh, was not needed. Instead, we make use of generics wherein we define one method which can be used over different data types. So this uh, reduced the programming, um, uh, this reduced the repetition of programs in Java. And also uh, this autoboxing is also very important for collections. Uh, now let's see how we will create and uh, how we will uh, autobox and unbox uh, these uh, primitive uh, uh, values. So in order to create, we let's say we have an integer integer variable. Okay. So in order to create, in order to create an or in order to autobox an integer primitive value, we just make use of the integer class and assign that value into its object. So here what we are doing, we are creating an uh, integer object of value 100. We are creating an integer object of value 
100. Now, when, if we want to uh, extract the value 100 into an um, into another, uh, uh, if we want to extract the value of integer 100 into another, into a primitive integer, then we just have to assign that object into the uh, into the primitive type. This will automatically extract the value of uh, uh, value stored in uh, in this integer object and that will be placed into the primitive type. So here the object is not explicitly created through the uh, use of new operator. Here we don't, uh, but while we, if we were using the um, wrapper classes, we had to make use of the new operator. But this auto boxing and unboxing is done automatically by Java. So this is the method, uh, this is the um, uh, style in which we uh, create an uh, integer object. We are creating an integer object. Whereas uh, if we want to unbox it, we are just assigning that integer object into an primitive type. So this is our example. So wherein, um, so in this line, we are autoboxing an integer with the value 100 <coughs> and that value is being extracted and stored into primitive type i. And when we print that value, when we print that value, we get 100 space 100. So th this 100 indicates the in the primitive integer and whereas this is the uh, autoboxed integer object. So, uh, by the use of auto, auto boxing, it, it prevented many er many manual errors, by many errors which was uh, uh, which was created at the time of manual and uh, manual uh, uh, use of these uh, methods, and also it uh, it produces the proper value. The auto boxing and unboxing produces the proper value, and uh, it does not. Uh, it does not pro produce any wrong type of object or value. So this uh, this method, auto boxing and unboxing, had had played a very crucial role in Java. Now these were these are the examples which I have used. Uh, sorry, these are the textbooks which I have referred mainly the complete reference for um, complete reference of. 8th edition by Herbert Schild. You can also refer these textbooks and these are also textbooks which you can you uh, you can refer to know more in Java. So in this video, in today's video, we have discussed about how to write data into the output using console output and then how we can format the data as per our wish and how to auto box and unbox the uh, primitive types in Java. So that is all for today. Uh, we will meet in the next video. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.